Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. So Thank we're you. going to call. Yes, put round of applause, please, for the panel. And now we're going to call our um, third and last panel. Um, and um, we have a uh, surprise mystery guest also uh, that we're adding to that panel. Uh, and that is, uh, we're pleased to uh, uh, have with us uh, today, in addition to the panel members, I'm going to announce uh, Tony Rakakis, who's the uh, district attorney uh, from the county of Orange. Uh, but I also want to welcome uh, Carol Poole from the National Criminal Justice Association, Mike Jones from the Pretrial Justice Institute, John Botters from Californians for Safety and Justice, Supervisor Cindy Chavez, the Board of Supervisors of Santa Clara County, and we're delighted to have such a preeminent uh, and talented uh, leader in Cindy Chavez joining us, Fernando Geraldo uh, with the Probation Department of Santa Cruz County, and sh again, Shelly Curran, uh, returning for a uh, repeat uh, uh, visit uh, from the Judicial Council of California. And um, although we uh, typically have started from my left and moved to my right, uh, what I'd like to do is um, uh, start with uh, District Attorney Rakakis, who uh, we're pleased to, to have with us here and with whom uh, I've had an opportunity to work uh, in my capacity as the leader of a law enforcement organization that investigates insurance crimes. And we work with Tony and the other DAs to prosecute those crimes. The title of this panel is Options for Reform of California's Bail System, uh, but uh, uh, you're welcome to uh, DA Rakakis address that or any other uh, things you'd like to share with us about the bail system in California. Welcome. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, I just wanted to uh, uh, make a make a brief statement. Uh, I've been in this uh, I've been in this system for quite some time and. And uh, um, in fact, over over 40 years, and and uh, I've been a I've been a prosecutor, a judge. I was a judge for nine years, and uh, and a um, and elected district attorney as well. And also, I've been uh, on the defense side uh, for uh, for a time. And uh, I, with respect to the with respect to the bail system, I mean, let me just say that uh, first of all, um, I don't think there's any question about whether or not it's constitutional. I, I, I'm I'm well satisfied that it's constitutional. In fact, it uh, it um, pre-exists uh, the uh, both both uh, constitutions, and I think that just the mere fact that that uh, bail is recognized in the in the Constitution as uh, uh, as uh, uh, this the statement to the effect that uh, um, that a person uh, can't be held on excessive bail recognizes that reasonable bail is uh, is proper, and so. Um, I, I, I don't think there's going to be a constitutional question when it comes down when it comes down to it. Um, the uh, the bail system, uh, you know, I, there are a lot of uh, good programs that are being discussed. There are uh, uh, pretrial release programs and and uh, and diversion programs, and there's and there's a place for all of those programs, no question about it. Um, but the bail system is very important to our criminal justice system, and it and. And it would be uh, it would be tragic to uh, to have uh, uh, some uh, decision that would uh, uh, that would undo undo the bail system. And you know, particularly uh, when, we, when we start discussing uh, the more serious felonies, uh, you know, these uh, uh, when you get when you get into uh, into some of the more serious felonies uh, um, or the more sophisticated felonies, we're not going to. It's not a place where uh, where where pretrial release programs that are supervised and that sort of thing uh, uh, would really have uh, would really have any effect. And as I've seen the bail system work over years, I can tell you that I think it's really quite effective. Uh, particularly, um, you know, I, I I wish I had some studies on this. I don't, but I can tell you that I've seen uh, many thousands of cases, and I've been on the been on the bench during thousands of cases, and uh, 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 people who are bailed out uh, tend to return to court. And if you, if you look at, I mean, the, ch the chances of their re returning to court are, are very great. I, you know, the uh, people who are, are bailed out on a, on a reasonable bail um, uh, generally do uh, make their appearances as required to make them on time, maybe sometimes late now, but, but overall, uh, you know, they're, uh, they're pretty good about it. But, uh, um, the way the system, the way the system is work, is working, is that uh, when people don't appear, so let's say uh, uh, if somebody doesn't appear, people don't appear, uh, and they've been released on their OR, 
uh, that's one thing. Or if they if they have uh, posted bail, um, you know, that's another thing. So if they're if they're released on their on their OR, um, then uh, uh, the judge uh, um, finds a failure to appear. Um, you know, the case uh, uh, the case goes uh, uh, the case goes off calendar and uh, and it, and it goes into the system. And really, nobody goes out looking for that for that individual, unless maybe somebody, a detective or uh, somebody in a police department, uh, is excited about that particular case and wants to search it out. Otherwise, uh, uh, there really isn't uh, isn't a system that that picks up those warrants and uh, and has people go out and search those people out and uh, find them and and bring them back to court. On the other hand, uh, if they're if they're bailed out. And there's there's going to be a bail agent. There's going to be a company or a bail agent that has money up, and uh, and as soon as that person doesn't appear, uh, then that that money is at risk, and the uh, and the bail agent has a has a reason to uh, uh, to get those people back into court, and uh, in general they do. Uh, they they uh, um, they will uh, go through a lot of. Uh, uh, Investigations and and uh, and searching to uh, to to find the person and to convince him to uh, uh, or her to to uh, to come back to court and uh, almost all the time they succeed and so uh, when you think about it that's a that's a pretty good system and it's not a government system it's the it's a private system they go out not at government expense but they go out at their own expense they they find the person they bring them back. Uh, and it doesn't it doesn't cost us anything um, if the uh, if the person was not on bail and we just released OR uh, and we ha and we had to uh, you know send the government agents out uh, then that would be at, at taxpayers expense and it would be a whole different uh, whole different ball game but I tell you generally nobody goes out looking for the people who don't uh, uh, who don't who don't show up who failed to appear uh, when they were uh, when they were released OR. Um, so uh, I, I think that for that particular reason, I think the bail system is uh, uh, is terrific. Now I've heard uh, uh, you know there's some questions about uh, well when you forfeit the bail money or or that there are a number of ways that uh, bail agents can um, uh, can get their money back. A lot of exceptions to the forfeitures and that sort of thing. Um, but the truth is that it when when the when there's a risk of that money being forfeited. Uh, they don't. They don't want to take the risk of losing their money, and they do go out and they do uh, get the people, and they do bring them back. I've had as a as a judge uh, on a number of occasions where uh, I've had actually uh, bail a agents appear in court and ask for an extension of time uh, with respect to the forfeiture, so that they could so that they would have a little more time uh, to get the suspect back. And I can, there was on there was only one occasion where. Uh, where they didn't, and where that didn't work, and they didn't actually bring a suspect back, and that was uh, uh, somebody who uh, who went to uh, Iran, and and uh, and and they and they couldn't get him back from Iran, and and uh, and somebody in Iran said, well, he had dis been he had died there, and uh, but that couldn't be uh, proven or disproven. But uh, I mean, that was just that was just one case where a bail agent couldn't bring the person back. Um, so I, I think it works uh, really well, and I think there's a, I think there's a, a place for it, and I think it's an important place for it in uh, in our justice system. And, I, and I'd hate to see uh, I'd hate to see that uh, um, you know thrown out. I think uh, uh, you know there are there are certainly uh, some things about the bail system that uh, uh, that might be uh, that might need uh, some some adjustment. There's uh, of course, the question of uh, the the differences, uh, lack of uniformity from one county to the next, uh, you know, 58 different counties, and uh, uh, you know, the question of whether or not there should be a uniform uh, bail schedule in the state. And I'll just say I don't think so. But I think that as a uh, um, as a, uh, on a as an alternative to that, I think it would it would be uh, helpful and uh, uh, maybe uh, uh, certainly beneficial to have uniform guidelines to uh, to to have judges use to set bail so that they could uh, uh, go down those guidelines and think and think of it in certain ways, uh, you know, before they make the decision uh, as to uh, as to whether or not to set bail. Uh, I certainly uh, it's important to have uh, uh, to have a judge or 
um, uh, or maybe a commissioner uh, look look at at each at each case at the earliest possible time. So you have uh, you have bail set on a schedule when somebody's uh, when somebody's in in jail, and uh, you know that uh, that schedule might be uh, uh, you know who knows based on the particular crime and that sort of thing. It's just based on that, not based on the individual. Uh, may, maybe the bail set at uh, four or five hundred thousand or fifty thousand or whatever it might be. Uh, I think it's appropriate to uh, to to require that that be reviewed by uh, or have a judicial review within a within a short time period in order in order uh, for an adjustment to be made uh, that would uh, consider the individual circumstances uh, uh, ties in the community prior crimes uh, basically likelihood to return to court that sort of thing. Um, I wish I could provide some statistical uh, information for you. I, I can't. I don't think that uh, that. And I'm actually I'm I'm sure that the courts don't keep um, uh, records of, uh, of failures to appear uh, and compare that. You know whether or not somebody was on bail or not on bail when they when they failed to appear. So it would that would have to be done in some in some other way. Like uh, Nina Salerno suggested that maybe. Looking at the uh, at all the warrants and seeing uh, and seeing what the uh, what the circumstances are on that. Um, I've I'm going to have to. I apologize, Tony. I'm going to have to um, ask if we can move on to the other speakers. I really appreciate, but we're, they're going to kick us out of here at 12:30. Um, so, is there I one additional point you'd like to make? One more point. Please go ahead. Um, one more point. I'm done. Please. Uh, and that is that uh, I've heard, I've heard a lot about rich versus poor, and I can just I can just uh, if I just want to say. That uh, an awful lot of people get bail who are not rich. A lot of people who are uh, who are uh, who are struggling to make a living and and uh, and in in uh, um, you know in in circumstances other than wealthy circumstances uh, are bailed out and uh, large.